Hi and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're looking at the camera tool. And uh, this is part of the Blender Basics tutorial series. So let's get straight into it. So the camera works like any other object. You can translate it, rotate it, scale it, you know, and um, move it into the place that you want to have it moved. It is connotated by a pyramid with a, with a rectangular bottom to the pyramid and a triangle that's pointing up. Good. And the red rectangular bottom of the pyramid is pointing to where that is situated on is what we see. Now, unlike other graphic programs that what we see in the viewpoint viewport is what is rendered, um, what is actually rendered in 3D programs most of the time is what is seen through the lens of the camera. And in this case, we can see the camera in the scene. However, the camera will not be part of the rendered scene. So what this camera is actually viewing through the perspective of this camera is what's going to be shown in the render when we do render this out. So we're going to go ahead and demonstrate that we can press zero on the numpad to view through the camera screen, or we can go to view at the bottom here and go to camera. Good to go into the camera view. And as we go into the camera view, we have a nice transition here and we see that a couple we start to see a couple of things. We see that there is a dark gray area at the back at the bottom um, around the normal gray of the scene. And the dark gray area suggests what the camera will not be able to see and will not be in the render. Whereas what's within this um, gray is what the camera does see and the angle that it sees it at. So, you know, in the same way that we could move the object or the camera during when we when we are outside of camera view, we can also move it when we're inside of camera view. So we can let's press GX and move it to the side and move it to the other side and we can move it up on the Z axis. So it's still fully movable in this viewpoint but here we get a view we get a view of what our scene will actually look like good so the camera has a has a couple of attributes and properties we can change we're going to take a look at them i remember all of these tutorials i'm doing all in reference um perspective point to the motion graphic we do later on and also some of the things i will not include because it's not part of where the direction that i'm going but we're still going to go over the camera tool and how it operates as it's such an essential tool. So the first thing we see is lenses and we have an option of three. We can have the panoramic lens, which is um, an extended lens that circles around an area. We have the orthographic lens that sets the lens such that all lines are parallel and they are perpendicular to the plane or to the grid that you see at the bottom and there is no sense of perspective. Or we can have the perspective, which is a default one, which looks the most realistic to life. Good. And we have options to change that. Like the focal length of the camera, you know, if we want this via millimeters or field of view, we have shift. So if we translate and we unable to translate, we can use shift to shift the camera. And then we have clipping. Now clipping is a little bit different this is render specific and talks about the distance that things are away or close to the camera that begin to show in the view in a 3D viewpoint as being cut off or or being made intangible. You know, when the camera reaches a distance close to it or when the camera is a certain distance away from something. So we can control how far this clipping works. If we reduce the clipping to say a lower level bring it down and as I bring this clipping down we can see that the cube is beginning to disappear uh, so that is all dependent on the viewpoint it is not a real clip but it is dependent on the view of the camera so if we want to control where this clipping happens you know then we can set this value here so then we have camera presets which is a whole set of popular camera presets that we can set this camera to based on real life real cameras in real life we've got the size of the sensor 
you know, and then we can determine the sensor is a vertical or horizontal fit. So we're just mimicking a lot of the features of a camera. We've got depth of field, what to focus on, the distance of that focus, and the armature or the f-stop that's going to be used to determine the blur in the background. Right, we have things that we can display, you know, in case we want to see compositional guides and that could include the rule of thirds so we're going to take a look at the rule of thirds and we can see it here if i press zero we notice if we don't see the rule of thirds only within the camera view we see the rule of thirds and we can also see other things like the limits which represents the clip clipping limits that we talked about up here the clipping size so if we this gives us a line to tell us where objects are going to start clipping and this is the far distance that they'll start clipping. If we were to move this in, we notice that the line changes as well. So that's what this limits is for. I miss this another line. And then we've got the sensor. If we go into zero, we see that. Let's click it off and click it off again. We see how far the sensor stretches. And you know, lastly, we have the name of the camera in the top, in the bottom left. If we want to name it, good. Uh, outside of that, the size represents the size of the camera in the 3D port. If we increase it, the size increases, but it doesn't really affect how the camera sees an object. Lastly, we have safe areas, which are the bounds, bounded areas in the camera's viewpoint that you know will definitely be shown and will not be clipped off when an ex when external rendering or when um, or when there's when it's being rendered on we want to make sure that there's a safe area in which or all, all things that are in that area no matter the clip no matter the you know editing or post editing effects you know that area will always be vis that area will always be visible cool so that represents the camera tool remember that you can't um render anything out of blender without the camera tool and the camera tool is very very important for setting up your scene so you're going to have to be moving back and forth with the camera all the time so remember that zero on the numpad we can go to view and go to camera here which is the fur from the bottom option and that is the end of this, of this tutorial if you like this tutorial give it a thumbs up if you want to see more like this tutorial you know like the video and subscribe if you are if you have things to add that you want to add you know feel free to add it i am happy for the comments constructive criticism and constructive comments and the person's really not happy for it so feel free to do that but until we see each other again get up and design